channel and welcome to episode 35. Today we're going to take a look at the Logitech MX Keys and MX Master 3 wireless keyboard and mouse combo. Whew, 35. Man. Combo, huh? Well, all I can say is you better make sure that you call your shot. Call the rail, call the pocket. Right, Nessa? That's the rules. Keith, have you been watching the World Cup of Pool from a while back? Why, yes. How did you know? Um, call it a hunch. Huh, yeah. Well, maybe we'll have to schedule a visit to Vegas so that we can uh, cash in on this. You know, like in Rain Man or, or The Hangover. That's quite a talent that you've got there. Not really sure it works that way. So, for now, can we focus on the wireless keyboard and mouse that we're reviewing? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. So, th what we're talking about here, this combo, is the Logitech MX Keys wireless keyboard bundled with the Logitech MX Master 3 wireless mouse. So I'm just curious, what is it that drove you to buy a wireless keyboard mouse combination in the first place? And what drew you to this particular product set? Way to overcome that uh, slow start and jump right in with a couple of great questions. So on your first question, uh, one of the things that was motivating me is the distance from where my keyboard uh, needs to sit in front of my monitor to the actual CPU or, or computer box itself. So it's a pretty good distance, and so it was gonna take a USB extension cable for both the mouse and the keyboard, uh, and therefore I'd also lose two USB ports on my computer. So that's some of what I was, I was thinking there. Yeah, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, this way you avoid buying two large or long extension cables and having to fish them through that little hole that you have in your desk. I've seen that and it's pretty cluttered already. You might not even have room for that. So all of that makes sense. But you didn't really answer my question about why the Logitech combo. Oh yeah, so where I position my keyboard and mouse um, is a shared space for my work computer. So I have my video editing machine there as well as my work computer, and I wanted a keyboard and mouse combination that would work with multiple computers. And the Logitech has hard-coded buttons uh, to switch. Uh, on the keyboard, it's numbered one, two, three, and there's actual individual buttons uh, for that selection. And then on the mouse, it's actually got a selector. So there's one button, and then it has a light indicator whether you're on the first, second, or third device. So it made it very easy to switch between computers uh, with the touch of a couple of buttons, one on the mouse and one on the keyboard. Yeah, I get it. So it, it had some features that not a lot of uh mice and keyboards actually have, so that makes sense. Uh, I, I really get it. In fact, my wireless keyboard, I have the Logitech K830. I do love this keyboard. It's super rigid and it has an integrated trackpad, but it does not have those features, the, the device switching capabilities, and that really bums me out because I would use that. Uh, but what about you? Is that the only reason that you bought this particular uh, mouse and keyboard combo? No, I read a lot of reviews and let's face it, Logitech is a big name in this space, the, the keyboard and mouse industry. As well, both devices are rechargeable so they have integrated batteries and they use a cable that I have a ton of them. It's a, a USB-C cable. Um, it has great life between charges. I mean, I, I kind of lose track and, and sometimes I get the warning notice that I need to, uh, to charge it and I was like, gosh, I, I don't remember the last time I did charge it. Um, as well, the keyboard is backlit, which I absolutely love because I prefer to work, whether it's uh, my day job or video editing, with the lights down at a, a fairly low level. So having that backlit keyboard uh, is a great feature for me. Wait, so the keyboard is backlit? That's, that's cool. But I thought you said it had great battery life. I did, and it does. So the backlighting is only on if you're actually actively typing or if your fingers are near the keyboard. Once you move your fingers away from the keyboard, it'll eventually start to dim and go out. Okay then, yeah, well that makes sense. So, speaking of battery life, how long exactly are you getting in between charges? Logitech states that a full charge is good for 10 days with the backlight on and up to 5 months with it off. I am typically going about 3 weeks or so between uh, charges, so I'm clearly getting much better. Clearly one of those cases where your mileage may actually vary. Ah yes, and we do get a lot of mileage out of that phrase. Boy, I really set you up for that one. Ah, okay. And how is the battery performing on the mouse? Is it roughly the same as the keyboard? Actually, the mouse does much better. 
So Logitech states that you get about 70 days between charges on the mouse. And I'd say that's about right with my experience. 70 days? Damn! Nessa, that's like over a year for you. You should be more excited about this. So how do you know when it's about to go dead? I mean, or what happens if it actually just dies and you weren't even aware? Do you just stop typing? There's actually an indicator light that when the battery needs to be recharged, it'll uh, light up and then you know that it's, it's time. Now, if you do happen to miss it, the good news is if you've got your USB-C cable, you can plug that in. And the minute that you plug in the USB-C cable, uh, it'll power the device and charge it at the same time. So you don't have to worry about uh, you know, missing that event. Now, what you'll give up is that truly wireless experience while you're charging. Well, I guess that isn't so bad depending on why you went wireless in the first place, right? And I assume that's probably the same with the mouse, right? You can use it while it's charging? That is correct. The charging port for the mouse is on the very front of it. So when you're charging it, it really just turns it into a wired mouse. They, they were smart and didn't make that charging port on say the bottom of the mouse, which would preclude it from charging and being used at the same time. Okay, yeah, well, Let's get down and dirty with the review here. Let's talk about you know, the overall build quality, how much does it flex, what's the typing feel like, what's the speed like. Let's talk about that kind of stuff. Let's start with the keyboard. Great questions, Keith. The keyboard feels really solid. So this is not an inexpensive keyboard and you can feel the build. Uh, it's actually got quite a bit of heft to it, but you know, that's, that's in a good way. Uh, so you can feel that it's, it's built with quality materials. The typing feel, it feels solid. The keys respond well, they're placed well. It has a uh, integrated numeric keypad, which I'm a huge fan of. I'm an even bigger fan of the fact that it's got the uh, light on the caps lock to indicate that the caps lock is on. I inadvertently hit the caps lock all the time. So being able to see that that light comes on is a great feature for me. Uh, some wireless keyboards, uh, they will actually have some lags in the input. And so you'll actually end up, you know, missing some key inputs. Um, I do not really experience that with this keyboard. So I'm not missing any input. Now, I don't know if this is uh, as responsive as say a dedicated gaming uh, keyboard. But quite honestly, I'm not a professional gamer. Um, my gaming is what I would call very casual. So from that standpoint, if I were gaming on it, it's not gonna be an issue. I don't know that a professional gamer is gonna look to this keyboard as their number one choice. There's also some custom buttons that you can uh, bring up application. Like there's actually one dedicated for the calculator, but you can program keys to uh, have different actions. So really it's, it's got all the features that you'd want uh, for a full featured keyboard and it has the build quality and battery life that you'd want to look for. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty good. So is there anything missing? Not for me, Keith, but if you're a wrist rest person, right, you want one integrated into the keyboard, this one does not have one included. Now, they do have a $20 add-on and it is made to match the height of the MX Keys uh, keyboard. So that may be something that if you want an integrated wrist rest, uh, that you look at. Now, obviously it's not gonna be integrated, so if you pick that up, it's, it's not gonna go with it. Uh, it would only be while it's on a flat surface. And then for those people that like the adjustable height for the keyboard, you know, they normally have feet so you can change the leveling like your mom likes to do. This keyboard does not have that as well. So that might be a situation where you end up having to kind of rig something up to change the, uh, the angle that the keyboard is sitting at. So those are the, probably the only two comments and actually they're not applicable to me because uh, I don't use the integrated wrist rest on keyboards and uh, the height seems to be where I'd want it to be for that angle uh, on the back edge. So one of the things that uh, would probably make it important to look at the MX Keys specific wrist rest that you can buy for $20 is the fact that the MX Keys keyboard does sit lower than most traditional keyboards. And so a traditional, you know, just generic wrist rest that you buy as an add-on may not match the height and that might be a problem. So if you need a wrist rest, you know, check, check and make sure that those two working together are going to give you what you want because a third party wrist rest is probably not going to match up well. Okay. Yeah. So no integrated palm rest. So that's a, a bit of a problem, but you can buy one if you need one. Okay. Yeah. You know, you mentioned my mom and that's right. I, I bought her this exact keyboard. Uh, just a couple weeks ago and she does struggle with it because of this palm rest wrist rest thing in her case She has one permanently built in to her computer hutch. So she's She's always got one and because this keyboard sits pretty flat 
it, it does feel a little weird for her, right? So I think for most people, being able to buy this, this, uh, this palm wrist rest from Logitech that's uh, not integrated but able to work with this keyboard is a good thing. Um, but yeah, those, the lack of feet on the back, because my mom has this existing wrist rest, she normally would compensate by flipping up those feet on the back to get a, a, a tilt, a, a severe angle on the keyboard. And she can't do that. So I think she's kind of just wedging stuff underneath the keyboard for now. Spot on, Keith. So for those people that, you know, have some of those considerations, these are things to be thinking about, right? And, and honestly, when we were talking about uh, putting this review together and the script was written, you hadn't even bought this keyboard. I'm not even sure you remembered that we were going to review this keyboard uh, back in the day. So it's, uh, it's great to hear some additional feedback and some other considerations uh, for people that are using this in the real world. Okay, yeah, and it's, uh, it's further confirmation, frankly, that great minds think alike, right? I bought this keyboard, you bought this keyboard. But uh, let's talk about the mouse. Uh, so does it have some cool features? Does it have cool scroll wheel functions and extra buttons and things like that? What does it do? I would say that the MX Master 3 is probably the most ergonomically comfortable mouse that I've actually ever had. So it's really designed for business users. So going back to, to my purpose for it is not, you know, hardcore gaming, professional gaming, anything like that. But I think this mouse is extremely well suited to business uh, settings as well as for creatives. And uh, I've got some reasoning behind that. Uh, it's not that you couldn't use it for gaming, but they make dedicated, super high speed, you know, very high resolution mice that that's their purpose. This is a general purpose business and creative uh, type device. So the reason I say for creatives uh, and even for business uh, that this is very handy is there's multiple scroll wheels. You can program buttons. And so I actually use this uh, in video editing. There's a uh, side scroll button for your thumb. And I use that to move the timeline forward and backward. So I can scrub through the timeline uh, much like you would, say, a jog wheel uh, just using my thumb. So for me, that creates uh, quite a bit of efficiency when I'm video editing. And I would imagine that there's other things, you know, maybe you could scroll left and right on a large spreadsheet for someone that's maybe more into that, you know, productivity application uh, purpose for the mouse. Uh, from a scroll speed accuracy perspective, it's great. It is uh, formed uh, around your hand. Now that does create one potential issue. I'm right-handed and this mouse is not designed to be interchangeable. So, you know, you can't switch this over to be a left-handed mouse and there is no left-handed version of the mouse that is made today. Yeah, cool. So I've been around the bases with Logitech products myself and I know that there are there there, there is a software side to the story here. Uh, you don't have to install the, the Logitech software, but I'm curious about your thoughts. Is there anything special on the software side? I would say that the software is okay. So you're going to use it to program which computers are attached to the wireless keyboard and mouse. There's probably a lot of features in there that I'm just not leveraging. Uh, quite honestly, I set it up, I installed the software, I programmed which computers I wanted attached, and I've pretty much forgotten it since. Okay, interesting. You know, I think I agree with you, by the way. Um, but you mentioned using this device switching capability, the anywhere capability, going from one computer to the next to the next. Uh, is that limited to PCs? How does that work? Oh, great question. So I failed to mention that you can connect this keyboard and mouse to a Mac or PC. So the Alt key is also marked with the Mac command. Now they do make a dedicated Mac version, but uh, they also make this multi OS version. That is the one that I have. So if you are dedicated to all Mac, you might want to look at the all Mac one just to eliminate the extraneous uh, you know, markings on the keyboard and have it dedicated towards uh, what a Mac user is looking for. Okay, cool. Yeah, so overall, are you happy with your purchase? I am. You know, if you go online and you read some of the reviews, there are people that have had problems with this particular uh, keyboard and mouse combination. This is really kind of an extended use review. So I've had the devices since January of 2020. And it's been my daily driver ever since I purchased it. And I've experienced none of the problems that are mentioned online. So uh, perhaps I got lucky, but uh, I think if I had had any of the issues that, uh, that were out there in that uh, nearly year and a half uh, that I've had the devices, uh, I think I would have probably seen something. Fair enough. 
So, I think we have reached that moment in the episode, Nessa, that we dread, but that the audience perhaps cheers. You mean it's time to end the episode? Yeah, that, that's exactly what I mean. It's time for everybody who's still watching this episode to hit the like button. In fact, I think most YouTube channels, you probably have noticed that they ask for the like uh, way up front in the episode within the first 20, 30 seconds. We're doing it now. We're asking you now. In fact, I would say every like we've ever received, we really earned it. And if you're still watching now, come on. We've earned it. Hit the like button. Just go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And since you're still here, if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so now. We'd appreciate the help with the YouTube algorithm. And heck, don't forget to click on the bell to get notified of new content. After all, small children will fall down and puppies will perish if you don't. Hey, Keith. I just realized we forgot something. Are you sure? We already asked everybody to like and subscribe and to click the bell and do all that stuff. Wait, hold on. Are we, okay, are we giving the MX keys and the MX Master 3 mouse our seals of approval? That was it. So I think we definitely are giving them seals of approval. So on that high note, you'll see us, Keith and Bruce and uh, Nessa, who appears to be dreaming, dreaming of the next episode of Dad's Talk Tech. <laughs>